Hello all, what I'm going to do today is cover the effects brush found in Photoshop Touch. It'll be a very quick video tutorial on how to use the effects brush. We'll just pull up a picture here. Let me uh, go into Photoshop Touch. We're actually going to start with a picture from the camera roll. So I'm going to hit the add image. And I just took a, a picture of a guitar and, and a picture, um, a digital image behind it. It's just so uh, it would give me a little bit of a playground to work with. So let me add that. <clears throat> okay, so we have our image here within Photoshop Touch. Uh, if you notice, I've already got the effects brush on. If you don't, just go down to all of your brushes and you'll see the effects brush there. Once I'm in the effects brush, I can change some brush uh, attributes here. And if, for those of you who have older ver versions of, of Touch, I'm using, um, I think it's 1.6 is what it is, latest version as of May 2000. 14 you see the the new additions to making some changes to your brush head right there but uh, in which case i'm going to make sure the size is at a doable process here probably about 102 well anywhere in the 90 to 100 ballpark flow and opacity are all fine hardness is uh, at 14 percent which is fine then what i'm going to do is pull up the separate effects now keep in mind with the effects brush the reason you would use the effects brush over the effects menu which is right up here is that whenever you're using the effects menu it's going to affect everything within the picture where the power of the effects brush allows you to only cr create painting effects on certain parts of the picture so let's say I want to use this comic one which is a pretty popular one the first thing it does is it shows you what the brush will do when you paint on it so you can change all kinds of things on each of the effects uh, dynamics whether it's brightness uh, saturation curves all of those other changes that you can make to the effects brush but they all each have individual individual adjustments so in this particular one with comic I can adjust the amount of colors that are being shown and obviously the comic effect works based upon limiting colors so it makes it look more like a, a comic book so the more colors you put into it the more realistic it's gonna look like so I if I turn up the colors to 28 or something like that uh, it just makes the picture look a little more realistic if I mess around with the edge level you can see what that does uh, that's kind of a cool effect on the back wall there. I kind of like that a little bit. Um, I might go back and do the wall with, with this type of a piece. But if I lower the edge back to, it was I think it was in the 40-something percent, and I bring my colors down back to 5, you can see how the, the comic effect is, uh, uh, how it affects the, the image itself. So I'm going to stay there. I'm going to hit check. I think I'm good. Keep in mind, this screen is just to be able to make some adjustments within that comic effect and see what they look like. The minute I hit commit, the blue check mark, you're going to notice that absolutely nothing happened to my picture. But once I take my brush and I start painting now, and all I'm going to do is paint on the picture itself, and the minute I start painting on the picture, you start to see that that comic effect takes, takes hold on whatever it is I'm painting, which is a great idea with the brush. So what I'm going to do is just comic eyes if that's a word my image up here my digital image and color in you can see that the comic effect is being added to the actual image okay so that looks pretty good the other uh, and again I want to mess around with a couple of these effects um, the other effect which you, you're starting to see a whole lot more is this idea where uh, something that's in the foreground is color and the rest of its black and white um, you could do that with this. Uh, let's say I wanted to take the uh, the guitar and make that color. Let me get rid of the comic effect on the picture here real quick. But let's say I want to highlight the, the guitar and make that the color piece where the rest is black and white. Uh, in order to do this, though, I do want to increase the size of the brush because otherwise than that, it would take me forever. So as I start painting now, you start to see that. I'll let it catch up. I'm using a slower iPad here. I can actually increase the size of my brush to the biggest I can increase it to as well. Taking a few minutes. This must be a big, a big image. Let me increase that all the way up to 200. And you can see that you can take the color, strip the color pieces right out of the background. And anytime I see it delaying, I know I'll have to stop and you know it's chunking out right now. I'll have to stop and let it adjust and do what it does. But you can see how that works. 
So in essence, what I would do is continue painting around the, the guitar and take out, strip out all the color around the guitar. And there are other ways you could do this. You could actually select, uh, if you wanted to be real careful, you could select the guitar and inverse select and just be able to paint what you want to paint and then you wouldn't even touch the guitar. If I had more time, I would do that. But I'm just kind of giving you a rough idea of what, what this uh, what this effects brush does. And I'll just try to do one more time with a table. And the corner over here, and it's bogging down again, but that's okay. And there you go, you get the idea. So th again, this effect is used quite a bit. You see this in video as well. Um, just another effect layer you can push into there. I could almost too, and I'll, I'll just show you this real quick as I wrap up the black and white. Let me go back to uh, another effect that I like, uh, the saturation effect. And what saturation does is it allows you to saturate colors as best you can. So if I drag up on that, you see what it does to the guitar. It kind of pulls out the colors within the guitar. So I pull that up to 94%. Let me shrink my brush because it's a little too big just for the guitar now. And I start painting over the guitar, and you see the colors really kind of explode. Such a beautiful guitar. For you guitar fanatics, that's a Schechter, by the way. Maple top, quilted top. So there you go. Kind of gives it an, a neat feel. I could also go back, and a, another idea would be to saturate the picture and the guitar and leave the rest black and white, too. A couple of ideas for you to uh, think about. But the effects brush is, again, the difference between the effects brush and the effects menu. Effects menu affects the whole entire image all at once, which is a whole different function. The effects brush allows you to apply effects to a selected area of your image. More to follow.